Welcome back. T740 no start, Doosan engine. We got the dreaded E001076-16 rail pressure control fault code. Uh, low rail pressure codes, all that kind of falls right into this. Um, this T740 utilizes the Doosan D34 engine, but since it's a 740, it's actually detuned to 75 horsepower, so we don't have the SCR and emissions on it. It makes it a little easier to work on this fuel injection system. My whole goal is to try to diagnose this fuel system without using any software, any computers, or anything, and I'm going to show you how I do that. Usually a rail pressure control fault is set because the uh, computer actual demand pressure versus I guess actual pressure uh, has a differential of over 2000 PSI. Let's say the uh, ECU wants to start this machine and it's calling for 5000 PSI um, rail pressure, but the rail pressure sensor is saying oh, I've only got 2000 PSI, uh, it's well below that threshold and the engine will not fire and start. So let's try to figure out why it has low rail pressure. So first thing I want to do is actually make sure I have fuel to the fuel filter. The fuel filter looks fairly new. It is the new style filter. So I don't necessarily think that this filter is clogged up. Um, if I had a low rail pressure code while the engine was running, then I would kind of go straight to the fuel filter. But since it's a no start condition, I don't think it's um, the fuel filter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the primer bulb and see if I can tell if I'm getting fuel through there. And yes, I am getting fuel through there. The primer bulb is getting firm, which tells me I've got fuel all the way to my injection pump. Now, the injection pump has an IMV, uh, inlet metering valve, and that controls the rail pressure. I'm not gonna get into too many details, but when it's calling for rail pressure, um, this IMV is gonna be wide open trying to meet that uh, demand that the computer is asking for. And since I don't have any IMV codes, I'm just going to assume that there's nothing wrong with the IMV. It is opening, it is doing its job because the ECU monitors that. If I had a problem with it, I would have a code on the dash telling me that. The only code I currently have is low rail pressure when I try to start the engine for more than three seconds and it doesn't fire that code, that E0070, uh, 1076-16 code pops up. So I know I got fuel to the injection pump. I don't suspect the IMV. I'm going to go straight to injectors. And what's scary is I can see these boots are already removed and I can see that um, on these fuel injection lines, somebody's already had a wrench on these. It's almost like they're trying to maybe bleed the injectors. Common rail diesel engines, you do not bleed, the, you do not crack these lines, you do not bleed the injectors, they will take care of themselves as far as air is concerned. Um, but somebody's already been in here for some reason. I don't know what they've done. They may have caused more damage than actually <laughs> good. Um, but I'm gonna just remove those boots off the injectors. Now I'm have access to all four injectors. Now this is my injector return manifold here. And you see they have little clamps on them, but usually what I do is I, I use my thumb and push. We gotta be real careful not to break uh, this manifold because it is a manifold. We can't just replace the tube on it. Um, you know, if we break one of these fittings, we're gonna to have to replace this whole manifold. So I just push that one off. I don't even move the clamps myself. I use both thumbs, push on the T gently, pop that one off. Okay, and I'm gonna get my return manifold out of the way. So using my eighth inch clear tubing, which you can get at Home Depot or really anywhere, I'm gonna hook this to the, uh, the return side of these injectors. And this is called a static test or a back leak test. You'll hear it called different things, a leak test. Um, what we're trying to do is see if any of these injectors have an excessive amount of leakage through them. And if an injector is leaking a lot of diesel, that means that it's leaking more volume than the actual high pressure pump can can deliver so that way we can't reach uh, demand of pressure all right so i've got all four of my lines hooked up to the injector so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to turn the engine over and we're going to watch these tubes and see if there's a see how much diesel i guess is, is coming back through them Okay, so we can see that we're gonna start right here. Number one, two, three, uh, injector number four. 
it looked like injector number two is definitely leaking more than the rest. One and two both, I would say, failed the, um, the static test because they did leak so much. Three and four are questionable. I would almost say this system needs a whole entire fuel system. But I'm going to see if I can get it started by blocking off number two. I'm going to show you a little trick here. So I went ahead and removed my clear tubes and I went ahead and put my, um, my return manifold back on the, uh, the injectors. So what I'm going to do is what I have here is this little cap is an injector uh, block off cap, I guess. Um, I will show you where you can get this down in the description. I've got a link for this. So what I want to do is I'm going to actually cap off the rail right here for number two. I'm going to isolate this number two injector and hopefully that'll give me enough rail pressure to fire the other three injectors. This four cylinder engine will actually run on three cylinders if we can reach uh, rail pressure. So I'm going to get this line out of the way. Go ahead and put my cap on my rail. Oh, it's a bigger wrench. So now that I have the number two uh, injector blocked off at the rail, let's see if she'll start. So that's just a quick tip to show you how to get this out of a field in an emergency is using those injector rail caps. We block off the one that's leaking the worst, then we can probably build rail pressure, get the other three running and get the machine uh, to a location where we can work on it better. So to remove that injector, of course, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my line. Technically, you're supposed to replace this line every time you replace an injector. You should also replace the line at the same time. Unfortunately, I do keep injectors on the truck, but I don't keep all the lines. There's only so much stuff I can stock, but you know, being field service, I've, I've got to get this thing running. So I'm going to go ahead and inject or uh, remove this cover right here. This is my injector cover or my rocker cover. Just using a little eight millimeter, we're going to remove all these bolts. So the top of this engine is really clean, but a lot of times the engines are really dirty. Just make sure that this area is really clean before you move this cover. You'll notice I didn't remove the other three lines because this cover will actually come out without removing those lines. See, it'll kind of just slide right through the side here. Now my injector hold down is right here using a six millimeter. I like to use this real long uh, Allen head. So this is a six millimeter. Might have to raise that injector just a little bit to get the hold down out. So I'm gonna remove the manifold again. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the injector. It's got a little lock tab on it down here at the bottom. Try to push in on the clip here on both sides. Maybe.
remove the electrical plug. Sometimes I have to use a little pry bar, just kind of lift up on that injector. Now I can pull my hold down out. And remove the injector. And you notice that my copper fire ring here came out with the injector. Always make sure that comes out and make sure that we replace it with a new one when we put the new injector back in. Also remember, or I've got another video I'll put a link to where we actually talk more about this C3i injector coding. When you install a new injector, we have to install this code into the ECU. That way the ECU has the parameters of the new injector to fire correctly. So the engine will start and run without programming these. However, it should be programmed as soon as possible so that we don't cause any damage to our engine. We want to make sure that our uh, firing, our timing, our injector timing <coughs> is precise with the new injector. So. Remember, it'll start without the code, but do get it programmed as soon as you can. So now I'm ready to install my new injector. So with the new, you know, in the parts catalog, they might call this a spacer, I call it a fire ring. But what I do, a copper washer, whatever you want to call it, is I just reach down here, go ahead and drop it into the injector hole. Look down in there and it, it landed flat, but sometimes they don't land flat. I just take my long pick and I just kind of make sure that it's flat down in the bore. Now on my injector itself, there's a little O-ring here and all this does is keep uh, engine oil from leaking down to this side of the injector. So it doesn't really seal anything, but it just keeps engine oil out of the combustion chamber itself. So I like to put a little oil around it. And I'll just go ahead and drop my injector into place. <clears throat> now, try to push that injector down by hand, you know, don't, if it doesn't go down, don't hammer on the top of it, you know, you don't want to break this plastic clip off, just, you know, work it back and forth and it, it will eventually drop down. Get my plug on and my injector leak, or uh, return manifold hooked in, my injector clip locked, injector hold down. Click, click. I know that's torque to spec. And we'll go ahead and reinstall our cover. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm reinstalling this injector line, you know, knowing that it is highly recommended we install a new line and we install a new injector. Because what happens when we actually torque this down, we're seating uh, that seat down to a new injector where it was already seated to the old injector. But you know, sometimes field service, we have to work with what we have on hand. In this case, I do not have a new injector line on hand. So we have to reuse this old one. All right, so now that we got the number two injector installed, let's go ahead and um, see if the engine will fire up.
So hopefully those tips helped out. You know, uh, the, the engine doesn't sound quite right to me. I'm going to continue the diagnostic process with a laptop. Um, but w I, I guess hopefully this helped you out to kind of know how I diagnose it without a laptop. You can diagnose it without a laptop. You can replace the injectors without the software to get it running you know, just to get it back to a shop or to a dealership or someone who can program those injectors for you. So hopefully those tips helped out. I'm going to get this thing finished up. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Check out the, uh, the Super Thinks. If this helped at all, there's a uh, YouTube now has a Super Thinks, man. I would certainly appreciate that. Without your support, I couldn't do this. I couldn't keep doing these type videos, you know, with the thumbs up on the channel, the comments. Um, you know, check out our website for tetridegroup.com, you know, to schedule a consultation. If you need any help with your particular machine, I'll be more than happy to help you out. Um, again, without your support, I couldn't do this. I couldn't help the everyday backyard mechanic fix their own machines. And that's my whole goal here. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.